I'm Ian Somerville and in this video I'm going to talk about a, an accident which happened to a space vehicle which was a consequence of a software problem. This accident happened in June 1996 on the first launch of the Ariane 5 rocket. It led to a complete failure of the rocket which exploded shortly after takeoff just completely destroying the rocket and its satellite payload. Ariane 5 is a European rocket that was designed in the early 1990s with a view to taking relatively heavy payloads into space, communication satellites and that kind of thing. It was a successor to the very successful Ariane 4 rocket, which wasn't as large and which could not carry as heavy a payload into space. Ariane 5, since then, has developed and has now become the standard launch vehicle for the European Space Agency. The first test launch of Ariane 5 with a scientific satellite payload took place on the 4th of June 1996. About 37 seconds after takeoff, something started to go wrong. The rocket changed its trajectory and stresses were built up to such an extent in the rocket that it self-destructed. It seemed that control signals had been sent to the engines which caused them to swivel and hence caused the rocket to lose and change its trajectory. The system failure was a direct result of a software failure in the software driving the inertial reference system. This is a navigational system that ensures that the trajectory of the rocket is maintained as intended. As we shall see, this was a software failure, but it had deeper systems engineering causes. It's uh, indicative of a general failure in the processes and approaches used to system validation. The inertial reference system is used for navigation. It takes input on the satellite's speed and direction and it calculates its position in space and sends signals to the rocket to ensure that the path or trajectory of the rocket is as intended. In Ariane 5, there were two computers in the inertial reference system, a main computer and a backup computer which coped with hardware failure but both of these computers were running the same software. What happened was that shortly after takeoff, the software in the inertial reference system shut down so that signals were no longer being received by the engines. The engines in fact received diagnostic data, which was basically completely, completely irrelevant to the, the situation that the rocket was in. And this caused the engines to swivel to extreme positions placing very strange and unusual stresses on the rocket for which it wasn't designed and the rocket started to break up and the safety mechanism of self-destruction kicked in. The software failure occurred when there was an attempt to convert a floating point number into a fixed 16-bit integer. The floating point number was too large to be represented in, the, in 16 bits and this hence caused a numeric overflow. The maximum value that can be represented in a 16-bit integer is 32,768 and the horizontal velocity which is being measured by the sensors was greater than this and hence the number overflowed. The software did not have an exception handler for numeric overflow and as a consequence it defaulted to the overall runtime exception handler for the programming language used, which was a language called Ada. And its default behavior in the event of an unhandled exception was to shut the system down. As the backup system was running the same software, exactly the same thing happened. Now the key question is, why did this happen? In fact, the developers of the Ariane 5 software followed good software engineering practice. They decided to reuse software and actually the inertial reference system was exactly the same 
as that installed on Ariane 4. This had had many successful launches and hence it was thought that this was a very reliable system. The part of the system that failed was one that was actually not needed because the particular computations being carried out there were actually now carried out by a ground-based system in Ariane 5 but the system developers had decided to leave the software functionality without change because they were concerned that changing the system could introduce new problems. The decision not to test for overflow exceptions was taken again for apparently good reasons. Generally speaking, when you're designing an embedded control system, it's best not to run the processor at maximum capacity. So it was important not to ask too much of it and it was decided to leave out that check because calculations showed that on Ariane 4, the horizontal velocity could never exceed a value that can be represented in a 16-bit integer. The designers of the Ariane 4 software made the correct decision that overflow exception checking was not needed because the value could never overflow. Obviously, they could not anticipate that the software would be reused in a different context. When it comes to Ariane 5, another contributor to the problem was that there was no requirement for this facility in Ariane 5. As I said, it had actually been transferred to a ground-based system. Because there was no requirement, there were no tests developed of that aspect of the inertial reference system. So the system, that, that code, when running on Ariane 5 was untested. When the system was being validated, the actual IRS, inertial reference system, was not used. Rather, they used a simulator of the system. The simulator did not include this functionality because it wasn't really needed for the functioning of the Ariane 5 rocket. Hence, again, it was not tested. As with all critical systems, the software and systems in the Ariane 5 had very stringent design and code reviews. But these did not discover the problem, and we don't really know why. Possibly the IRS software was not reviewed to save money. Because it had been reused and it had been shown no problems in other systems. Perhaps the re it was reviewed and the review failed to expose the problem or failed to expose that test coverage would not reveal the problem. Or perhaps the review failed to appreciate the consequences of a system shutdown during a launch. We don't know. One thing that happened in the development of this system is that the records of the process were inadequate. There were not complete records kept of what actually had and hadn't been done. Ariane 5 is now a very successful launch vehicle. As I said, it's the standard launch vehicle for the European Space Agency. And there have been, <coughs> I don't know how many, tens of successful launches since that initial failure. The lessons that we can learn from this are you shouldn't really run software in critical systems if you don't need it. That you should also be thinking of testing systems for what should not happen. That a default exception handling mechanism that shuts the system down is really not a good idea. And that in fact, if there are problems in making a computation, you should always try and do a best guess because that gives time to recover and to without compromising the overall system. It's best to use real equipment rather than simulators. Simulators are always a problem. There's always a concern that you haven't quite got the simulator right. And it's important to have very stringent review processes that include all disciplines so that people could perhaps un have understood in this case that the horizontal velocity in Ariane 5 was different from that of Ariane 4.
You can download the slides that accompany this video from my SlideShare account.